Okay, we are live. Well, hello everyone. My name is Eric Bridges and I'm the executive director of the American Council of the Blind. So happy to welcome you all today to uh, this live stream over YouTube, our Facebook page, as well as our Facebook community page. Um, we are celebrating a momentous uh, birthday or anniversary. I don't know what, what we should call it. Let's call it a birthday. Um, the, the American Council of the Blind community events is celebrating its first birthday this week. And we are so excited and proud of what has taken place over the last 12 months. Uh, it's been nothing short of extraordinary, the amount of engagement that we have experienced from our, our members, as well as folks during that time that have not been members and some have not even known who the American Council of the Blind was until these events began. And it's created a whole new uh, community of engaged folks of different shapes, sizes, ages, you name it over the last year and has allowed this organization to grow very organically. And so I'm, I'm just so proud of it. And today uh, I'm very honored to welcome three guests uh, to talk about the community, what it's meant to them, how they became involved in it, and how we as an organization have adapted to the pandemic and uh, not being able to be around one another physically over the last year. So I'm very pleased to welcome uh, my colleague and friend, Cindy Hollis, our membership services coordinator. Good afternoon, Cindy. Hi, Eric. It has been an amazing ride over the last Absol year. <laughs> Absolutely. As well as uh, the ACB crafting uh, queen, can we call you that? Uh, Kayla Allen from Arizona. We can call her that. Yeah, that's what she is. Yeah. <laughs> you can call me whatever right. you want. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. I appreciate uh, you. Well, it's great to have you here. And then uh, an individual that started very early on uh, in our community uh, event uh, development last year, I believe with essential oils and is now doing some other stuff within the community as well. Haley Agers from Washington State. Haley, thank you, uh, Eric. Good Cindy. morning, I guess, still there, right? Yeah, it is. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me here. It's an honor. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming. So, um, Cindy, why don't you and I just chat for a minute? Sure. So, last year, mm -hmm. uh, March 13th, I remember being in the office here and we were playing, uh, it was a Friday afternoon, we were letting our guide dogs play. <laughs> um, Claire Stanley, who, who worked with us until late in the year last year, and her guide dog and my guide dog were running up and down the hallway having a great time. And then the national emergency came down and we weren't sure if we we're going to be here on Monday. Um, and uh, turns out that we weren't. And uh, that began over three and a half months of uh, remote work for folks here in the national office in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, but it also created remote work for our folks in Minneapolis, and in particular you, uh, and you are still working remotely, and you you even moved over the last yes. year to be closer to family, which I think is awesome. Me uh, too. <laughs> but we, yeah, so the week, that week, uh, what was it, the 17th? Yeah, the 16th, 16th 17th, 16th, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the 16th um, was the day that you, well, it was our first day working from home. That's that was, correct. Yeah. Yep. And, but that week uh, began the, the concept of community events. And we, you and I had been talking about that before, potentially doing an event or two with uh, our affiliate presidents to kind of engage them. And uh, so why don't you take us through sort of that week and then after. Well, and, and let's back up just a smidge to... February, we, you're right, the President's Hump Day Happy Hour. Uh, at that time, I was like, 
gosh, we need some peer-to-peer support. We need to bring people together. A new connection was really important. And so I talked to you and Dan Spoon about maybe holding a hump day happy hour. And so uh, at our board meeting in February at the leadership uh, conference, I I mentioned that we are going to start this hump day happy hour and everybody liked the name <laughs> and uh, let's give it a try. And so we did that on March 11th. So if people are listening and they're paying attention, this is before we're, everything's just normal, right? Um, we did that first gathering and it went off great and I knew it was going to continue and it still has every Wednesday. And then On the 15th, it was a Sunday, you called me and said we were going to start working from home. And, oh, the wheels started spinning like, oh, no, we need to make sure that everybody stays connected. And if chapters can't get together and people aren't getting together, uh, you know, I was worried about the, the sustainability of our organization and our affiliates. And so... I said, you know, tomorrow I'm going to hold a a conference call and invite anyone who wants to come and talk about staying connected during this time. So I I did one on Tuesday and one on Thursday. So that was March 17th of last year. And on Friday, and they were both well-received, well-attended and well-received. And so then on Friday, uh, I had talked with Dan Spoon and he's like, this is great. Um, Why don't you email the leadership list and see if there's anybody that wants to also hold? Because I said, I think I'm going to do a couple of like coffee socials next week. So that was my plan. And he's like, why don't you open it up and see if anybody else wants to do anything that they'd be willing to open up and you can kind of pull those together. So I did. And so we went from like, to that first week and I think we had nine calls the next week and they just continued to grow and uh, and over the course of this last year uh, we had weeks where we had you know 20 in a week and we thought we were doing great that was in April and then uh, we got up to 40 in a week and that was in May and I think our first 50 uh, week was in I think it was in June uh, it was either June or July and uh, then our first 300 events in a month was in September and we have I remember that was when Cindy was going humana 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 like yeah. <laughs> Having our, kind of, our yeah. meetings is like ah, this is uh, amazing uh, it's, do I yes this? it yeah. was yeah. And, and the thing is, is that a lot of people don't realize this, this wasn't a program. I mean, this is a huge program for ACB now, but we had not planned for it. There was nothing in place for it. We, we really uh, were flying by the seat of our pants for yeah. a long time. Our, our right? communications infrastructure with our membership was really based around free conference call telephone yes. lines. Yeah. And the first day, I'll never forget the first day that we were all at home, which coincided with the rest of the country. Um, we couldn't get on a free conference line. They were jammed up. And if you could get on, the audio quality was horrible. And so one of the things that, that um, we were, I think, forced to do was to adopt Zoom as a platform for communicating. Yes. And in turn sort of force feeding, I think, uh, the membership and educating the membership on how to utilize Zoom. And one of the most beautiful aspects of it was that the front end from, a, from an attendee standpoint was totally accessible, but even more importantly, in a lot of ways, the back end was accessible, yes. which allowed us to manage as a blind, uh, you know, consumer organization, uh, these events and not have to rely upon uh, sighted colleagues, although our sighted colleagues are great, 
or other sighted assistants. And so we were able to transform our, our infrastructure with how we were communicating. Some of, most of it had to do with necessity, frankly. Um, but, you know, in, in looking at how long this would have taken to evolve under normal circumstances, it probably would have been years, wouldn't you? Agree, yes, Cindy? because we would have had to sell different people and different, you know, you have to do, you have to jump through all the hoops, right? To, yeah, yeah. And you make proposals and then people make suggestions and then you change them. And then, and you, you have to think of everything. And there was nothing, I didn't, I didn't know anything. So I went into this pretty green and, uh, but it did become apparent that we needed to use Zoom for the reasons you just mentioned. I think even better, or more importantly, the sound quality, that just the quality of the the calls was so much better. Uh, and when there was any problems for people being able to get through on a free conference call, uh, even though we weren't doing it, it was somebody else that, you know, was on their, their conference call, their account. People emailed me when there was a problem, right? When they couldn't get through on a phone number or whatever. And I, and you and I talked about really, we just need to, have this as an expectation that everybody uses zoom because that way everybody's getting the same product right it it was really yeah. important that when people come in you know it's like they're coming into our building so to speak when they come into the community and so over time what also has played out things have been added and changed and you know we've had to put some uh things in place to make this really uh functionable and manageable and uh, so things like training our hosts we started out with six zoom hosts through up until convention and that was great um, that we were managing about 40 calls a week there was about six of us and as things got you know uh, people were also getting their own accounts so some people were using their own accounts for their calls which was fine and that me meant we weren't providing the host for them but then as it, we got bigger um what we discovered is that the experience the user experience then varied a lot and so now we ask all hosts to go through our training so that the user experience, it's all about that user experience. When somebody comes to one of our events, mm -hmm. we want it to be pretty similar. Not, not, there's not a stamp. It's not, you know, they're not all the same. They're facilitated by different people. Our hosts are different. We're all human. Uh, and the calls are different. They vary, but, but the safe, respectful welcoming that's never changed it's been really the driver right from the beginning and it has really driven some of the things that we've had to incorporate into how we do kind of our business um, absolutely the, so. the other the other thing that i will say that was going on on a, on a parallel track from an infrastructure standpoint was the evolution of, of acb radio and the ability for us to begin to take those events that were being recorded through Zoom and turn them into podcasts and make them available through acbradio.org uh, to folks and now Pinecast. You know, what we have done over the last year is created a library of content in uh, what, six or seven different categories, wouldn't you say? Yeah, there's, um, uh, there's about seven categories at least, and there could be more. I mean, topic driven is one of them. And let me just say, <laughs> there's a lot of different topics. So, of course. you know, yeah. uh, so we have topic driven, which really takes anything that doesn't fall into the other six, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we have social is probably still about 25% of our calls and about 5% of our calls I categorize as fun. Those would be things like karaoke, it's playtime, uh, and open mic night and other game nights. So those, uh, that's about 5% of our calls. We have health and wellness, uh, peer support, uh, technology, and boy, uh, develop, personal development, uh, so personal development is things like uh, learning the guitar, 
uh, crafts, uh, learning a language. So uh, those Isn't there are, a line dancing class you were telling me there about? There is a line dancing <laughs> class on Fridays, and it is so much fun. Right on. Uh, and I think that that would, you know, that one falls kind of under the health and wellness. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I can and, see that. Sure. Yeah. And so we have, um, and yoga and uh uh, cardio and resistance and uh, taking care of your mental health. And so there's things under, you know, the health and wellness. Um, we have book chats and more and more book type calls are coming up all of the time. So currently we have uh, three, four of them, four of wow. them, uh, but they they constantly are coming up. We just started a French class. Uh, and next week we have not one, but two Spanish classes that are starting up on two different days. So, which I think is really exciting. Um, and, and then technology and we have partnerships with people. So some of, I, I feel like I just could ramble on and on, but really the, 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 the truth of the matter is this, the reason that this has grown is it's community driven. Yes. So the, many of these calls are facilitated, led by, planned by, the whole orchestration of them are by community members. Yeah, it's uh, organic, which is so is. cool. And in yeah. fact, just to continue on the ACB radio theme, we actually rebranded yes. and reprogrammed a channel on ACB Radio, yep. uh, calling it ACB Radio Community. And that happened all, at the end of May. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because we had already developed at that point, uh, you know, an inventory of really good content that we felt very strongly should be shared. And uh, folks at ACB Radio uh, very much wanted to get that content out over ACB radio. And uh, by the way, we're on ACB radio uh, live, live right now, yep. as a matter of fact. And the, the radio component of, of our organization is that, that existing infrastructure has really enabled us to reach a lot more people uh, through the community. And, and it's, been, it's been amazing either through the convention or a DC leadership conference a few weeks ago uh, in particular, for this event right here, all you have to do is ask your Amazon Echo to play ACB Radio Community or to open ACB Radio Community. And there we will be right now, uh, probably well, just we're now on ACB Radio behind. Live. But right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Was, anyway, community. ACB Radio Live. Yeah. And, and yeah. there we will be. And if you go to ACB Radio Community right now, I believe there's something live that's on there. There is. As well. well there's and you're right uh there is something live right now they're doing they're learning about legos i wanted to be ah, on that yes. call that's that's right <laughs> so pretty cool stuff oh yeah you so know uh, at, the, partnership, a, the partnership the right, partnership with acb radio mm -hmm. has been amazing uh because there's you know i talked about hosts and we've gone from six hosts to over 100 hosts and uh they Really, I, we may have one person who cited the rest are all blind. Uh, so the number of people who are blind that are supporting this, this project, this program is pretty immense. And then all the volunteers through ACB radio that stream and, uh, and make sure that things get edited and, you know, who, whoever does the magic wand to get things into the playlist for uh the content that keeps on recirculating 24-7 uh, on the community stream. Uh, we, we just couldn't do any of this without all of those people. So many hands helping. And it's never been a question of if we should. Like everybody's just seen the need and jumped in. And it's more like, okay, how do we make this better? How do we do it? How do we keep on going? But it's never like, I don't know if we should. That's right. never been. So I want people to know that, that the, the whole time, besides it being organic and the growth outside, you know, and people coming in and building this community internally within ACB, uh, it's, there's never been a question about supporting this community, which 
I'm so grateful for. So sorry, Absolutely. Eric. No, me too. So yeah. let's let's talk some high level numbers here for just sure. a quick sec to give folks an understanding yeah. of of sort of the totality of the last year. So sure. you know, we started with what was it 13 in March or so, and then it went up by it went to like a decent s- amount. 60, 60 something in, in April and right. 160 in May. So there's a big jump and sure. And so how about what are we at right now in terms of total events over the so last 12 months? As of Tuesday, which would have been a full year of community events, keeping in mind that first week, we only did two events, right? So mm-hmm. Um, we were at 3,118 events. That's amazing. And we know that over 75,000 attendees have uh, taken part in these events. You know, that's, you know, uh, some may be multiple, you know, have done it more than once, but that's 75,000 attendees. Uh, and this week... And that we, doesn't count podcast downloads no, or no, like or video, radio, ACB like radio. views of what we're doing right yeah. now yep. uh, nope. or, or the ACB radio. Stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. just Zoom numbers, Zoom right. numbers over 75,000, sure. Zoom numbers over 3,100 events. And, uh, and then this week, so where we were, you know, thinking we we're doing hot stuff in May with 40 calls in one week, uh, this week, we have 100 events scheduled. So Which is an all-time high, right? It is. A high, yes. So we have not plateaued yet. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, it keeps yeah. growing. So, yeah. Um, uh, and in fact, we, we've been doing some juggling for next week as uh, some things are wanting to happen uh, on, a, you know, where somebody wants something to happen and we didn't have an account and we're we're using a personal account to get something done because it's not that they're all happening at the same time, but you can only have one thing happen on an account at a time. And if they, if they're back to back, you need a little bit of leeway between events so that there's time for one to end and for another one to get, you know, opened. Right. And so they can't be as back to back. We, we need like a half hour between them or something. So anyway, we're, we're playing around. I mean, it's a lot of, it's constantly moving. We're constantly figuring things out. Um, there's, there's no getting, there's no stagnant here. There's nothing that no. it doesn't ever slow down. Uh, we've had to create forms. And so when people want to submit an event, they fill out a form. And uh, when hosts want to let me know that they're available to work, they fill out a form so that they let me know what they're available so I can schedule people for that next week. So, you know, those didn't exist. Right. You know, we we had to build an infrastructure as we were building the plane. Like it, 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 yeah. And it's, it's evolved and it's been it's been so much fun to to be part of. I think our core values have really held up over the last year, or we've held them up yes. when looking at the community, honesty and integrity, uh, respect, flexibility. Uh, initiative, flexibility, <laughs> <laughs> and collaboration. Right? Yes. I mean, all of those things have have had to come into play in order for this to be the success that it has. And Cindy, Absolutely. you know, you, um, you've led this, obviously there are a, a number of people that have so jumped in to assist. And in fact, we're going to be hiring somebody to bring onto the team to help Cindy Yay! here <laughs> soon because it's grown, it's grown so much, <laughs> and, but, but I, I do want to thank you for all of the time that you've put in. Uh, it, it's weekends, it's nights, it's, uh, it's almost nonstop. You it's... were on the job for about nine months and then this happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is one heck of a curveball. And but you've you've taken it along with a team and just run with it. And it's been well, fantastic. And I and I am so grateful uh, because it allowed me to show that I could be successfully uh, successful at working from home. And so you allowed me to continue doing that. And I get to live near my family and my grandchildren. Right. So uh, it's been a win-win. It's been an amazing, it's been an amazing time. And, you know, the common question that people ask 
is will the community continue after convention? That was a common question last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and they still, here we are a year later, will it continue after, you know, everybody's vaccinated and people go back, you know, to whatever, whatever normal seems to be. And my answer is always that, you know, if people still want this community, it's going to continue. I don't know what it'll look like, but I can't imagine anything, uh, you know, it, we're ready to support it. And if people want it, it will continue. And that just reminds me of the fact that we're not just even, it's, it's great to hear people from all over the country, but we are hearing from people all over the world. So we've, yep. uh, you know, that's been, and, and even our, host we have a host that's from uh, Dubai and we have another one that's going to be trained this weekend from the Philippines so uh, you know that warms my heart too uh, no, just it's, it's to fantastic. Know reaching. yeah and to, to go along with them we have two guests on here that we should we probably do. talk to <laughs> yes <laughs> that, that um, came on pretty early in the the formation of the community events um, that have been significant contributors, uh, I think one of whom wasn't even a member at the time. That's um, true. And, and, you know, why don't we go ahead and, and chat with Kayla and Haley a little bit about uh, how they came to our community events and, and yeah. what they've thought of this experience, because it's been good to kind of hear their voices over the last year. For sure. So uh, why don't, Haley, why don't you tell us, first a little bit about uh your your family like just you know the makeup of your family yes. and um and you were already a member of course because you're in the washington council but uh mm -hmm. what what brought you to a community call to begin with well so thank you for having me first of all it's a huge honor and i'm sitting outside um Speaking of family, in, in the 45 degree temperatures, this is what you do for ACB um, so that you can talk. Um, hopefully in the quiet, it's garbage day and who knows what will happen. But um, <laughs> so I, um, I've been married for 27 years. I grew up in England um, where, you know, I really didn't consider myself a blind person at the time, although I was, but I was just in that stage of my journey. <clears throat> um and so when I moved here to the States, um, you know, I, I, my story changed, but, um, so I've been married for 27 years. I have two children, two teenagers, um, a son and a daughter, and they, my husband has been working at home since March and my children have been schooling at home since March. So it's now been a year that all four of us have been home. And, um, and at first it was lovely. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, but so, <laughs> at first, um, <laughs> and, and you know, I had a couple my, days like that at the beginning too, Haley. Right, it was right. like, oh wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> and, that and, wore off quick, didn't it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so, you know, my husband's working in the basement, and my kids have picked a different room in the house, which they're not allowed to do it in their bedroom, just you know, for safety reasons. And um. And it was like, everyone was telling me like, leave the room, get out of this room, Hun mom, you can't talk. And well, shoot, I need to have my own thing. Right. <laughs> so, um, so Cindy and I have been friends for a while because she was from Washington and, um, and we were talking about the community calls and she knows that I've been using essential oils. And she asked me if that might be something I might consider doing a community call on and, um, Absolutely. So I think, yeah, I was pretty much there from the beginning. It's been a crazy ride and I, I can't wait to kind of, you know, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into right now, or if that's just sort of an introduction. I think that's perfect. But, and we'll, we'll yeah. talk about some of the things you're doing now, because you are doing some other things as well. Sure. Uh, yeah. Kayla, how about you? Tell us a little bit about your family and how you came to the community. All right. Um, I have, my story sounds a lot like Haley's. Um, I've been married for almost 15 years. My husband was sent home from work um, March 19th. My kids went on spring break last March and they've still not gone back to school. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I have one kid in my living room and one in the dining room. My husband's up in the bedroom. So his, our bedroom is, is half his office, which is you know 
Um, so I'm in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we have one in the garage and one in the yard in 45 degrees. Man, oh man. That's <laughs> this, is, right there. Uh, this is That's ACB right. love. This is ACB <laughs> love. Yeah. So I have upgraded when I first started in June. I live in Arizona, so it's 120. So I've upgraded from the master closet to the garage <laughs> <laughs> until it gets hot again. <laughs> Yeah, a garage in June and July has got to be bad too, right? So <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why I'll yeah. downgrade again, I guess, when it gets hot or get okay. an air conditioner. <laughs> right. So um, so yeah, so I've been um, somewhat homeschooling my kids as much as I can, um, giving technology barriers and stuff like that. Um, and I feel like we finally got a handle on all of this. Like my kids are doing well in school now. Um, I have very good communication with their teachers. Um, but this technology thing was a huge barrier for all of us. Um, and we, we did it. We're doing it. it. It's pretty, looking back a year, I did not think I'd be where I am now. And what brought you to the community, Kayla? Um, so I, my first call was a um, Monday morning with Mika coffee um, uh -huh. sometime in April and a friend referred me she sent me the email and um and then come you know I, I did a lot of different community calls um come June the same friends like hey let's do a crafting call we'll meet for an hour twice a month and um we'll discuss craft and so we did that for the first meeting <laughs> um, it, was, <laughs> it was extremely apparent that that is not what people wanted they had that there's other agencies out there doing that they wanted to create and um being a previous volunteer of crafting I kind of like okay I can do this I didn't know how, I had no idea. I was used to going, being in a classroom with my students and handing them a sample of what I made that give them a guideline of where they're going, where they're working, what they're working for. Um, and then I could walk around when they had questions and touch what they were doing. And um, that, you can't do that on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the first, the first, the second call, so the first call, every no one wanted that. They're like, okay, so when are, what are we going to make? And so my first class-ish thing was toilet paper. We, we did a discussion on toilet paper rolls because, well, we were they in were a, a pandemic. Hot commodity. And everyone, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, okay, we're all, we're, all, we're all hoarding toilet paper, so now what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> so we came up with a craft. And then we did origami because I figured everyone has has paper, even if it's a piece of junk mail, it's, it's a piece of paper, you can fold it and you can make something. And then um, it's just so many people from the community have these amazing skills that they have shared with us. And I have learned so much so from let's all come, these people. Yeah. Let's come Sorry. back because there's so much about the craft <sighs> stuff that I... Yeah. It's exciting, actually. Um, Haley, your essential oils have also led to you doing some advocacy work uh, on behalf of those of us who are blind to use essential oils, right? I mean, you've been... I'm laughing because right as you start talking to me, the garbage truck is going by. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Paper and caper. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, so... Can you share a little bit about, um, you know, some of the challenges that you have faced with using essential oils and oh sharing gosh. that with people and what you've tried to do? Sure. It's actually been an amazing journey. I, I was sharing before we all sort of came on live, but I'm wearing a necklace. Um, it's a, it's silver and it's a big like daisy and the petals on the daisy are um, ribbed. And in the center, sort of like on one of the petals there, there's a, a raised butterfly with its wings like spread. And, and to me, that kind of encompasses what this whole experience has been like. So essential oils are 
plants, right? They're made from plants. And, and I love anything plants, anything flowers. And, and I love butterflies because for me, they represent transformation. And that's what this whole year has been, not just for me, but for everyone in the community. So, you know, I thought I would get on and do this initial call and we talk about my story and see if anyone was interested. So after being a mom for 15 years, that little inkling, that little doubt in your mind occasionally creeps in that says beyond being a mom, beyond being a housewife, uh, a domestic goddess, excuse me, um, what, (laughs) you know, what is my worth? What do I have to offer and what I'm passionate about, what other people want to hear about that. So, um, so I first thought, you know, I'll do one call and I'll share my journey, a journey of um, coming to terms with my blindness, kind of trying to find my place where I fit in, in both the sighted and the blindness world. Um, You know, I struggled with depression for a lot of my life. um, And and I dealt with that through sort of just, um, I don't know, I maybe I just didn't deal with it, I guess is more to the point. And so when I came across essential oils, I started using them because I already loved fragrance. I already loved being in my garden. That's where I was the happiest. And so, you know, I just shared that journey of, you know, I'm not a doctor. I, I don't want anyone to stop taking medication if that's what, you know, provides you what you need, but let's just find ways to supplement that, that will both heal your your heart or comfort, not necessarily heal, right? But comfort your physical body, your spirit and, and your heart, your mind and, and all of that. So that's sort of what my first call was about. But I soon realized that people were excited, which was great. Um, that was really exciting for me that other people wanted to hear about it. And I got to, you know, start doing it every week. And, but then I realized there was going to be all these challenges of, you know, I've been using the oils for so long that I really don't measure the drops. I'm comfortable with just sort of using them. I know what my body will tolerate, but these were a lot of people, um, more people than not had never, you know, they may have heard of essential oils, but they didn't know how am I going to measure the drops? How does a blind person, how does this fit into my world? And so it's been a journey of just sort of people coming on who have already used oils, because it's really not my call. It's, it's our call and people sharing their experiences. And, and so, you know, people would talk about their experiences with the oils and people would ask questions. And I would share that, you know, I, you know, I keep my oils in the refrigerator so that when I drop them onto my hand, I can feel the drops better, or I diffuse them in my house, but I drop it onto a metal spoon or my finger and swirl that into the water because I can't, you know, obviously see the drops coming out. So it's been a journey of like figuring out what works for everyone and, you know, sending samples to people even to try them was like, gosh, some people wanted large print on the the sample. Some people wanted braille and some people said, I can't read either of those. So just figuring all that out and realizing how diverse we all are, right? I mean, I think Maybe the sighted world might have tendencies to clump us into one category of blind. (laughs) And we're so colorful. We're so, we're a big rainbow. We're a big garden full of all different flowers. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. No, it is. It's awesome. I've never heard it put that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I think of us like this. And this is why I wore this necklace because I look at all of us as butterflies that are transforming. There's always people ahead of us in the journey of blindness and life. And there's always people behind us. And we're all just working it out together and floating through my colorful garden of flowers. <laughs> it's beautifully <laughs> and, Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I really answered your question, but those have been some of the challenges that I sort of have had to overcome, plus my technical skills. Um, which won't be a surprise to many, um, have really, it's taken me out of my comfort zone. And I'm super excited. I feel like huge growth in the last couple of months, which I couldn't have done without ACB and the people that I've met. And, um, and even more so, I'm really proud to say that um, the company that I actually get my oils from 
hasn't been the most accessible until this point. And, and I've talked to one of my friends that I, you know, use the oils with about that over the last year. And now we actually have a camaraderie and, a, and we've connected with the company um, and they have their accessibility and diversity team working with us. They've come on to one of the calls to um, really see what they can do to make it more accessible. And so now the challenge is not being complacent, not letting them put a blanket on our questions just to soothe um, the end, the questions we had, but really now following up with that to say, okay, you said you were going to do this, you know, where, where are you on that? Can you come back onto a call and share if there's been any progress? So it's, so it's been a journey of transformation and friendship and advocacy and all, all sorts and of things. Bingo. And that's what I was wanting you to get to mm -hmm. is that right there. That's yeah. right. I just love that you um, put into action and reached out and had them come onto a call even and mm -hmm. it just I I love that and uh, anyway it, yeah. it's been great and people look forward to your calls and um, it's it's been really good in fact you. you even got yourself a, an email address with blind essentials right I did so, yeah. because I didn't want people's emails to get lost in my personal email I wanted to be able to get back to them as soon as I could and, um, and it's sort of evolved now into doing, you know, healthy eating classes and yes. having the essential oil vet come on and talk about safety with our guide dogs. And, and here's what I would say, like my one piece of advice to someone, and you've said this a lot, Cindy, over the last year is, um, just try, if you have an interest, ask to do it, people will show up. And, yes. And that's my big thing is even with reaching out to my essential oil company or reaching out to the essential oil vet, I mean, they could have just as easily said no <laughs> to me. And it, and it, and you know, it took a little bit of bravery to sort of ask, right. Because I knew the answer might be no, and it might not, I might not get the answer I was looking for, but what if you ask and you, and they say, yes. Exactly. And that's been really mm -hmm. cool. So. And, and that was, you know, that is my saying. Uh, I say this a lot when people ask, would people come to this? I'm like, build it and they'll come. And mm -hmm. nobody's let me down yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, yeah. let's talk about crafting. Because <laughs> what started out in June as one hour twice a month and never ended up being that. It was one hour the first week and then... It's kind of exploded over time. <laughs> Let's fast forward to where you guys are at and how much content you guys are doing just in the month of March. So in the month of March, we have 17 calls. Um, 16 of them will be two hour calls. And um, one of them we went over and Cindy was so gracious. To allow us to do that and um so that was a three-hour call that was actually a five-hour call because we did it over two weekends so that was I would say our biggest accomplishment of a class um and, and tell Eric what you made I made a basket like I weaved a basket oh. from reeds seriously yes handles. that's what they did can you believe that oh my goodness no and she has it she has it to <laughs> show do. so do you want to show it i i so this is it um it's imperfect because we're human and we're all imperfect but i um i had a girl reach out to me and say hey i know how to make ba baskets is that something your your group would be interested in doing and I said yes, because I never say no. <laughs> She's kind of like me. That's what we just do, yeah. right? We just say yes. That's why yeah. you have this big community. <laughs> yeah. And the instructor is blind herself as well. That taught us how to do it. So. That is very um, cool. And yeah. then tell, so tell some of the other classes that you guys do on a regular basis. Yeah, so we have ongoing classes. Um, we have crochet, loom knitting, and needle knitting, and those each meet twice a month. Um, for each of those, we have a, the first hour is a beginner class, and then the second hour is a more advanced class. Um, and then we have what I call general craft classes, and those typically meet on Saturdays at noon Eastern. And then we've also partnered with um, 
Tammy from Missy Kids, and she is teaching a beginner sewing class and a more advanced sewing class as well. And those meet um, once a month each. So I've, I've really made a lot of really good friends and some really good allies um, out there in the world. And I didn't even know there was that many blind people who were interested in crafting like I was. So it's, and and, and Kayla... It, I'm sorry, Kayla. She, tell about yeah. your last class, your of the of the year of the month, the the one on the twenty. You beat me to it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Eric. Eric, <laughs> Eric one you're for gonna kids, be there, right? right? I, yes, actually, I, I hope I, my, your my wife, wife is planning on coming. Yes, I think my wife oh. and son. I fear that I would actually yeah. glue my hand to the table if I Although, actually tried it. But well, he uh, was so goodness, excited. We're not using glue. This we're not using glue in this first one, so you might oh, be. Thank saying. goodness. Okay, cool. <laughs> he wanted. All right. He was all about the glitter, though. When you guys were yeah, doing the glitter something and with glitter. glitter. <laughs> yeah, I read. I was like, oh wow, that looks cool. I might actually yeah. have a fighter's chance at succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, our newest thing that we are starting, actually, our first meeting will be on the twenty eighth at two p.m. Eastern, is our kids club craft club um and I'm so excited with that because having kiddos myself um and I'm not limiting this to kids with visual impairments or blindness it can be parents that are have visually impaired visual impairments and they can bring their sighted kids so I want it to go both ways I want it to be all inclusive I just I love it Mm. so much and um so So Kayla Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us, uh, one, you, you are the one of the two of you that joined ACB after, uh, you know, what has this all meant to you? What, what has, why did you join ACB? What, what keeps you doing this all the time? You know what I mean? Month after month, because I know you're putting in um, lots of hours. She doesn't like to um, sleep. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I love it. It, it fills my heart with joy, um, to have a pile of reeds sitting there on the table and you don't even know they're called a reed, to be honest. I didn't know that. (laughs) Um, and then working together as a team, um, and you come out with something and you have a sense of accomplishment at the end of that class. That's, that's why I do it is because I love hearing people say, I did it. I got it. I made this. That is mm-hmm. exciting for me. Um, ACB has, has meant so much to me. I did not become a member until July. So I was already doing this. Um, but I never was asked to be a member. I never felt like it was something I had to do. And that's why I did it is because it was my choice. Um, and I felt so welcomed. Like I was a blind person in a sighted world my entire life. And I finally found somewhere I belong. Mm-hmm. So I became a member and I will yeah. be for life. <laughs> Yay. So, Cindy. So. Yes. And Kayla, so I was sharing with, you know, and I've said this on my calls, but I was also sharing with, with you, Cindy, this morning that I didn't even realize there was a part of, I didn't even realize I needed something, that there was a, something missing until I, you know, I've been super involved with WCB and I, you know, I'm a mom of two and life is busy and I really felt like I had everything I needed, but it wasn't until I came to ACB that I realized that there really was something missing and ACB has filled that hole. So I understand what you're saying, Kayla. All right. So I know I'm looking at the time and I'm going, this is going by way too fast. Um, Eric, any, any thoughts on uh, anything you want to ask these ladies or how are you feeling Eric about what, what we've, you know, uh, just really got to observe and, and uh, this, the witnessing of this amazing community, but here's two ladies that really, uh, are expressing, I know what's happening to so many in our community um, at different levels, of course, but I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I find it incredibly moving what was just said uh, over the last few minutes. Um, You know, as Haley said, uh, we're all on 
different journeys in, in our lives, whether it's blindness or just living every day. And, and when those two things uh, collide or, or are, are done in tandem and we can find others to share in that experience, uh, other peers, other friends, um, it, is, uh, it is most powerful. I, I became a member in 1999 when I was still in college uh, because I didn't have any other uh, blind peers where I grew up or at my college. And um, it, it provided, ACB provided me a, a support group of, of people through the student affiliate at the time that, that had the same shared experiences, right? And um, there wasn't a pandemic or anything like that. There was no uh, calamitous event that, that was taking place other than I just really needed to figure out how I was going to fit in the world. And over the last year, I've observed, you know, countless individuals uh, come to this organization who either had not, you know, had been members and sort of gone away for a while, or who had no idea who we were, but we created a safe a uh, respectful and welcoming place uh, to be uh, yeah. w- with a lot of sincerity and, and a lot of, just a lot of interesting content. Let's just be honest, right? So people, you can be nice and you can be boring. <laughs> I've witnessed this um, in my life. The, the events that we've created are, uh, that, that, that the community has created, not we as an ACB. Yes, we office, as a community. Yeah. But we as a community have created, yeah. um, have, have created this level of interest that, um, you know, is, is welcoming to everybody, right? So there's something here for everyone. Yep. Um, not everybody wants to craft, not everybody wants to learn about essential oils, not everybody Why cares not? about, let's talk. About, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, let's meet those people. But anyway, <laughs> you know, and, and the, other, the other cool thing, Haley and Kayla, I'll come to yours if you come to mine. Dan Spoon and your I Your sports host. one. I came to your yeah. sports one. Yeah. Okay. That's right. You oh, did. so now you got to go to Central Oils right. there. I'll, I'll learn. I'll learn. <laughs> I'll learn. No. But, you know, there's everything under the sun within the community yes. to, right. to participate. You know what, Eric, in. and it's making our states richer too. I just, because I would, I, you know, like I said, I don't have technical, great technical skills. Um, it's just, it just, it's just where I am, but I'm getting better. And, but I now feel comfortable with Zoom. And I now feel comfortable with Clubhouse and I now, you know, feel comfortable, more comfortable speaking. And so like, I get to bring that back to my state affiliate and, um, you know, like I'm going to be doing the craft, the kids craft with Kayla um, in April. And, you know, I can announce that to my WCB families um, committee Mm -hmm. and, and our state agency and, you know, they can learn about ACB that way. And so we get to bring those skills that we're learning through the ACB community back to our state affiliates yes. and, and making that richer too, which is a beautiful thing. And and also in, in other everyday life things, right? People are bringing it back to their churches and other clubs that they belong to that may not yes. even be blindness related. So it's so empowering. I, uh, when I first took a this position as membership services co- uh, coordinator, I talked a lot about uh, the three E's, embrace, engage, empower. And I will say the community has really taken those three things without maybe even thinking about it. Um, but they embrace, they en- we, as a community, we embrace, we engage, and we empower so many people stretching themselves and trying new things and feeling empowered that, oh my gosh, I really can host, I really can facilitate, you know, I really can use Zoom on the computer, whatever the step might be. So it's been amazing. I want to make sure I get in at least my email address. If anybody's listening and wants to receive our daily schedule, uh, please send an email to community at acb.org and just let me know you want to be added and I will add you. And uh, we use groups.io, but it, that's just the easiest to remember, community at acb.org. And uh, I'll get you, make sure that 
you know, we get you connected. Everyone's welcome. You don't have to be a member. We don't check ID at the door. <laughs> so uh, we just, we really do welcome everyone. Come in, check us out. And uh, just so many, so much offerings every day, even holidays. We don't stop for holidays. It doesn't matter. So anyway. Um. And also the link it will be in the comment section too to, to join as well. So perfect. Yes. Cindy, thank you so much. Yeah, Kayla thanks, and Haley, thanks so much. Look forward thank to you. uh talking yes. to the two of you more again uh in the future. Uh, on craft calls, Eric. Well, and when you Indeed. go to craft, I want to know when because I want to be there. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Probably like wind up spraining a finger. I might or just something. use blue in my <laughs> call now just because it sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask a question real quick? Sure. Quickly. Eric, what would you like to learn how to make? Let uh, me know and I will design a craft class for you. Oh my gosh. Okay, They're making cool. birdhouses. Um, we are. Yeah, so you could probably do that, Eric. Okay. Although it does have glue. Oh, all <laughs> right. We do have to use glue for that one. All right. <laughs> well, let's, yeah, let's, uh, let's continue talking. Um, one other quick thing. ACB does... I think Haley, you you referenced it briefly. ACB does now have a presence on Clubhouse. Yes, uh, we have the American Council of the Blind Club, the ACB Club, and uh, I believe it's tinyurl.com backslash join ACB Club yep. uh, is a way for folks to come on in and check us out. That is not a competitor to our community events. It is a it is a supplement or another it's sort an of developing yeah. arm of our greater community yes. so it's fun come on in the water's fine if you have a, a an ios device please join all right Absolutely. well uh, before we take off here if folks want to learn more about the american council of the blind please feel free to visit us at www.acb.org and as always everybody keep advocating thanks and have a good one <laughs>